Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all these videos that we have planned for you guys. In this video, we are going to look at the sculpting of Action Unit 9 in terms of the facial action coding system. Abdul Rahman and I are gonna walk you through the anatomy, through the forms, everything you're gonna need to know to be able to replicate this sculpt yourself. So check it out. Action Unit 9 is going to have two big parts or areas where the anatomy is important. So it's going to be right along the side of the nose and then right in the brow between the eyes. The muscle along the side of the nose originates between the eyes and comes down and inserts into the abicularis oris. This is enhanced by a deeper muscle that comes in at a slightly different angle and inserts deeper into the abicularis oris closer to the lips. The action at the brow is created by two specific muscles, the procerus and the corrugator. The procerus is in the middle, pulls straight down. The corrugator is on either side and pulls in diagonally. So to recap, the upper lip is gonna move slightly up and out. The sides of the nose are going to scrunch together, creating these horizontal little rabbit wrinkles. The brow is going to come down and squeeze in creating vertical wrinkles. So let's get sculpting. Make sure you have a layer created, press W to switch to move mode, and then press control and click and drag either from the upper lip down or from the lower lip up. Note, you can do this with the gizmo or with transpose now. Using the move brush, pull slightly up, but remember to pull like the muscle itself. So don't pull just on the lip line, but a little above it. As you pull the nostril up, try not to just compress it, but think about it as actually rotating as it lifts up in space. Continue to gradiate the effect up the nostril, pulling some of the flesh upwards. And remember that the action has a lot of pushing and compressing of this area right here. So add just a little bit of volume and then we'll move to start pulling the brow down. Using the move topological brush, start with the procerus. Pull that down, but remember not to go too far down. Always check where the line is in relationship to the eyelids. Then start gathering it from the sides and following the action of the corrugator. Next, it's wise to get in there with the standard brush and the clay brush to just sculpt a little bit of the flesh. And symmetry's fine at this stage. Then turn your attention to the side wall of of the nose. Notice how Abdul Rahman keeps the nasal bone separate from the nasal facial angle, which is really where the muscle and the fat kind of scrunch up. Then with the damn standard brush, get in there and start to sculpt the bunny lines that result from compression there. Keep in mind that it's a multi-part process. So you sculpt in the lines with the damn standard brush and then you switch over to either the standard brush itself or clay buildup to add a little bit of volume. Don't be above using the move brush to fine tune the lines and make sure that they're broken up and have enough variety and uh, character to them. Make sure to really spend some time on the procerus and separate the procerus itself, the small little band of tendon and muscle from the area around it. And then with the damn standard brush, go in and feather the lines. Notice how we're not keeping them as one smooth straight line, but they're interrupted and feathered. Take a second and watch how Abdul Rahman builds up the wrinkles around uh, the brow. He's using the standard brush and the damn standard brush. And notice how he switches between resolution level. So he'll be on a high resolution, then he'll go down to a lower resolution. And he's not doing just one big long line, but he's making these small little dotted strokes to develop the form. Remember to gradiate the effect. So as the compression is pulling in towards the center and down, it's also affecting some of the fat above the eyelid and causing that to compress. Make sure you check your reference and just be mindful of the effect working its way out from the center. Volume is one of the biggest games you have to play here. And as you're building different parts of the model, you'll start to see other areas that just aren't matching up. So in this case, Abdul Rahman gets into the side wall and right there into the nasal, nasal facial angle and starts building that volume a little bit. Of course, he's protecting this with a mask around the eye and in the orbit of the eye. 
Now let's watch as Abdul Rahman builds some of the secondary effects of Nose Wrinkler. So this is going to include compression in the lower eyelid. Notice how he builds up fat right there near the orbit of the eye, the uh, infraorbital margin. Pays a lot of attention how the volume is built up. Continue with Abdul Rahman's process of sculpting in the wrinkles with the damn standard brush while at a lower resolution. Keep in mind you're not really sculpting straight lines, but try to think of short staccato strokes. And we've been doing this for a while now, so it's really wise to get in and test the layer. Go to the highest subdivision level and then just use the slider within the layer sub palette to feel if this is working or not. Once you have your sculpt to a certain level, it's really important to get in there and start to add all of this tertiary wrinkling and breakup of the form. In this case, Abdul Rahman is doing this with the damn standard brush and really small staccato strokes. He's doing this around the eyes, around the nose, and then he's going into the actual wrinkles themselves and just starting to break up their ends, break them up a little bit in the middle, and start to create some quote unquote noise in the surface. You can also use the clay buildup brush, which works really to great effect around the procerus, glabella, and then farther up into the forehead. You'll see here Abdul Rahman goes between the clay buildup brush and the damn standard brush, pulling down these vertical lines and then smoothing them out a bit with the clay buildup brush. Make sure you're in a basic material, not a matte cap, and then use the light to move it around and see how the form actually behaves as you go in and sculpt some of this tertiary detail. Then check your blend shape. Just head over into the layer and run that back and forth and just look to see if it's following what appears natural, if the skin is all moving. And what you're really looking for is any problems like where a vertice is left behind or there's some weird stretching or something when it compresses is just going in a weird direction. Um, but for the most part, we're doing pretty good. We got a lock on this. Then go back in with the damn standard brush and add some irregularity between the folds at the at the end of the lines and just really start to break up the surface a little bit. So it doesn't look like it's just one clean, smooth surface, but something that's organically kind of folding and compressing upon itself. Then let's clean up the mouth area so we don't introduce problems in with other blend shapes. And we're gonna do that by looking at the inside of the mouth area and really just pulling the lips closer together from the back, from the inside. This is going to locate the majority of the influence of this blend shape on the outer surface of the lips and not inside. Finally, get in there and sculpt some of the skull back in. You wanna make sure that the bone is showing up and that you're starting to get that little notch there. It's easy to kind of lose track of that. Get in on the high poly and really start to add some detail in for the skin, uh, the skin folding around. And once you do that, you're pretty much done with this phase. Just go back and forth, check that this is kind of falling and pulling down the way that you want and you're great, you're good to go. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for more of these videos. All right, now, one thing to know about what you just learned is that this is a job. This is a career. It is something that if you have this on your portfolio in your demo reel, puts you at the top of the pile. You're not just another character artist, but you know how to help animators create and breathe life into their figures. All right, make sure you check out Abdul Rahman's class over at vertexschool.com. Take care.